everyone. Hi, Facebook, YouTube. Hello, hello, hello. This week we are here with a diverse group of guests as we discuss raising children in the military. As the one leaving, how do you feel when you have to leave your children behind for deployment? Um, I was a single parent, you know, at that time. I arrived at Fort Benning, Georgia. As soon as I got there, they said, guess what? You get ready to deploy in three weeks. You need to have your family care plan. You need to have everything ready. And I didn't know anybody. I just arrived there from Germany. You know, how do you reconnect with your with your children coming back off a of deployment? What I had to do was um, I just had to spend time with them. So, you know, usually when you get back from deployment, you're going to get some time off. That way they, they know you're home. They know you're not leaving, hopefully for a while. And then everything just kind of comes together. They seen you at home. They see you home every day. The, the reconnection process could work that way. And that, that's what I had to do when I came back. Yes, uh, my nine-year-old Zoe was born on one of my deployments. And uh, I remember, you know, being fearful that she would not recognize me. She was four months old when I when I met her. Um, but you know, I cannot say in all of my deployments, uh, the transition has been has been pretty good. You know? uh, it's a little overwhelming, of course, because they just want to spend all the whole day with you. But you have right. to understand that you know what they come from. That's the way they they express their feelings. He was able to do the what was it called? Like when you he would read the books and then send oh. the send the disc home. And so that, that helped a lot. That, oh my gosh, when I, that, that helped. <laughs> I would point out pictures like you said. I would be like, oh, daddy, this is daddy. This is, I would have pictures everywhere so she could see them. No. So if mom liked a particular restaurant, I would take the girls and I let them know, like, mom, mom really likes this place. Mom loves Marshalls. So if I had to take them to Marshalls, I'd say, hey, mom loves Marshalls, even though daddy was miserable because I hate shopping. I used to bring my children to, you know, to work. When I was a drill sergeant, I used to bring my kids because they can do push-ups. You know, I taught them how to do push-ups, so I use them as demonstrators. I'm hearing, I'm hearing communication. I'm hearing communication is the key. Talk about this subject to ask you guys, how important is it to have support raising children in the military? <laughs> like we, I, my water, my water broke and I call Ellison, who's our ombudsman, and I'm like, I think my water broke. The you know, first time, like, pregnant, I don't know what to expect. And so I was part of the FRG, which was great, and everything else. And it was because I was new to the ship, you know, we were pregnant, new, everything, first deployment. So it was nice having the FRG and that support group of people and knowing who the ombudsman was and knowing what the ombudsman did. No, that that is, but I, I thank you for that. Cause, and then they they were they got my mom there. They you know made sure she got there. But it was so great to have that support and everything else. Not knowing that you have absolutely nobody that can go get them for you, it is such an it's almost like a like the, the anxiety that that brings me. Knowing that if something happens to me from now on the daycare, and I have nobody to pick up my kids. And as a matter of fact, I oh man, that you're bringing up some. Ooh, I I had a an incident where I had to go to the emergency room and um, Helen was on deployment. The lady was like, you need, I gave her my symptoms. She said, you need to call 911 and go to the emergency room right now. And I'm like, who's gonna get my kids from daycare? Brianna just kind of, she doesn't speak much. She holds a lot of stuff inside and tends to, instead of telling us how she feels, she'll just walk off and go upstairs and everything else. It's the job. And if I don't do my job and we don't have a house and then, you know, we won't have, we won't have money to get things for them. So I kind of explained it to them like that, that this has to happen in order for this to happen. They still don't like it. They still don't like duty. I don't like it either. And I, you know, sometimes Sean is able to bring them up to, uh, to the command when I have duty and we'll, we'll have dinner or, you know, we'll sit and watch a game on the TV or something. So as, as a parent deploying during wartime, how do we explain this to our children? We try to be reassuring when they know what's going on in the world. You know, they bring up stuff at school and they hear things that aren't necessarily true. They need to 
understand the reason why we do what we do. We need men and women that are courageous enough to, to wear the, the country's cloth and, and do what people are not willing or even able to do. I arrived, you know, I was kind of paranoid. You know, when I got there, because I was worried about my children, I was worried, I think, more than anything. If it's my time to go, then I'm just gonna go. I always talk to my children, I would pray with them. It was like, mom, don't worry about us. We, we're good. When, when they convoying and that's the truck is moving and you just following them. I mean, you just get to that point because you have to survive. It was like, it was like living in the street. And I'm in a foreign country. Sometimes I would say, what am I doing over here? You know, and I'm like, I know I should be home, you know, because as a mother, I should be home with my kids, but I know it was my duty.